So when we talk about uh, cells, we again, I'll have to write with my finger until I get the pencil recharged. Cells have membranes, and we've talked about membranes a lot. We know that cell membranes define the cell, right? We know they're a phospholipid bilayer. These are things you should know. They should be already in your notes. I'm not writing them down. But do you know that they should be phospholipid bilayers? You know the different kinds of proteins that should be in there. And we've talked enough about that that you should be aware that that's important. And we've said something about the idea of there being some kind of way of telling what gets into a cell and what doesn't get and what gets out of a cell. We've also talked about this thing called, uh, we, we mentioned, not talked about, we're going to talk about it today a little bit. We've mentioned this area, this space on the outside of the cell membrane. It's, it's outside the cell membrane. It has a name. We're gonna, I'll give you the name in a second. And this stuff, it's made of proteins, and they're attached to the cell membrane. They can be tethered. The proteins can be anchored. There can be all kinds of ways they're attached. But there are these things called glyco meaning sugar, right? Lipids. So maybe they're, these are t lipids that are uh, tethered to sugars. There's, there are these things called glycoproteins. Oh, glycoproteins again are sugars that are attached to what? to proteins. And these both act as signals. Almost like a key in a lock or a, f a flag. So why would anybody put a flag out? Why would someone, you're, you're There's a war going on. They're shooting back and forth. Why would you want to have a flag? To claim an area. I like that. What else? What's another reason you'd have a flag? With to tell which territory is yours. I like that. So you're you're demarcating demarcating that something belongs to you, right? So another, another way these can be used is, is, is as flags. So again, what do, we, what do we do with flags? We mark Territory. territories. We mark territories. This is ours, right? It, it, we, we mark what is ours. We mark what's ours with a flag. So when we talk about glycose, glycoproteins and glycolipids, they could be involved in signaling. They in signaling what? In signaling what belongs to us. Someone close the door, please. What belongs to us? It could be a lock and key. It could be an enzyme uh, in that in that space outside, outside the cell wall, outside the cell membrane, outside the cell membrane. What belongs to us? And one example of what belongs to us is this idea of blood groups. You've heard of blood groups before. Yes. What blood groups have you heard of? What blood groups have you heard of? For example, of what belongs to us, what blood groups? A, B, O, A, B. You've heard of these, yes? And then there's plus or minus, it's RH. Rh plus or Rh minus. There's actually thousands more. There's thousands. I'm going to say thousands. It might not be thousands, but 
let's just say, let's not say thousands, say many more. Many more markers, we call them markers, for, that tell us, they act like flags telling us they, this belongs to us. So if you're going to get some kind of uh, transplant, you need to have some very similar markers. And so to get a transplant, they have to test all these different markers that are on the outside of all your cells. Because if, there's a different, if they're different, your cell will say, this doesn't belong to us. We got to kill it. It's, there's so many markers that no two people have the same markers. There aren't, they don't exist unless they're twins. Unless you're twins, unless you have a clone. A twin is a clone. An identical twin is a clone. And the only way you're going to get the same markers on the outside of every cell is if you have a twin. So unless you have a twin, you have no, no donor that's perfect. So no matter what, we have to t we, when you get a transplant, you have to take medicines that calm down your immune system. They kind of uh, make your immune system drunk, if you will. So they can't see everything clearly. It's a little fuzzy. If we can do that, then we can transplant. But even then, you have to get it close. So we can't turn your immune system off completely, if that makes sense, right? Because then bacteria would kill you, correct? So you know viruses and bacteria are going to kill you if we, if we turn off the immune system completely. So we got to do something about that. And the only way we can do anything about that is just to make, it, make your immune system act a little funny. Just calm it down. Tune it down. So these markers, the way they work is with these glycolipids. Imagine taking a lipid. Remember, it's a carbon-hydrogen chain the carbon being delineated by them, and then maybe there's, and at the end of that, you add a lipid, a carbohydrate. To that lipid, you add a carbohydrate. So you do something like this. Let me make it smaller. So you do something like this. You add a bunch of, a bunch of carbohydrates. You, it does, they don't all have to be the same carbohydrate. Maybe they're in a, maybe the carbohydrates are in a, in a ring, or maybe they're in a double ring, or maybe they're in a chain. You know, there's all kinds of things that could happen to this. Uh, what's really cool about this, these carbohydrate, lip, these glycolipids and glycoproteins is they can take on a bunch of more different shapes. And then each of these ends up being a different flag. That's how you can have a billion people, more than one, seven, eight, nine billion people, and everybody have a different set of markers. Because each protein, each lipid uh, that sits on the outside of that space can have a different shape. And that's because, gosh, you can add all, add all kinds of carbohydrates and lipids on the outside. There's so many different combinations. This purple space on the outside of here is known as the extra cellular mem uh, matrix. Why is it extracellular? Why extracellular? Why is it extra? Say what now? Very good, because it's on the outside of the cell, uh, cell membrane. So the cell membrane's here. Everything inside the cell membrane is part of the cell. This is outside the cell, so it's extra. It's an extracellular matrix. It's attached to the membrane, but it's on the outside. And you'll see drawings with all kinds of crazy things in here. It, think of it like almost like a jungle out here of different molecules that stick out. Some are receptors, so they act as, uh, some act as enzymes, some act, uh, you know, the lock and key idea that's happening in the extracellular matrix, some act as signals, some are being, you know, like I said, receptors, or maybe they're markers, flags, but all that's happening on the outside of the cell. We haven't even gotten into the cell yet. Now, inside the cell, 
we're gonna we're gonna divide this into two different kinds now. We got eukaryote. Let's talk about eukaryotes. And yes, eukaryotes are spelled with a K or a C. One's British and one's an English spelling, uh, American English spelling. I don't care which you spell it, but it should be something like this, eukaryotes. Eukaryotes, all cells, and I should mention this, all cells have a cell membrane. All cells have the extracellular matrix. Should I draw that? Why not? I think I can handle that. All cells have this extracellular matrix that act as a flag of some kind. Hey, this is one of us. Some of them have like a mucus layer, but there's this outside that's... Now, eukaryotes have something special, and this is going to be key if you're going to understand, and you're going to have to be able to identify the difference Eukaryotes have membranes inside the plasma membrane. They have membranes inside the plasma membrane. Does that make sense? They have membranes inside the cell. Does that make sense or not? Yes? All right, so they have spaces. They have compartments. Remember that, that from the video compartmentalization. They have many compartments inside. How do we define a compartment? How do we define a space in a cell? We use what? Say what? Yeah, how do we make a room in a cell? What do we use? What do we use to separate the spaces to call it a room? To call it a room, you have to have something separating it from everything else, right? Like this is a room, and it's, 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 there are things, there are these things called room walls, right, to separate us from the rest of the building. If you're going to have a cell, you have to have something that's going to separate this big space from any other space that you created here. What would you call that? Wait, what's the barrier? What is the barrier? What barriers do we use? You're right. You're absolutely right. But there's what... I'll give you a clue. I already wrote it down. Membranes. That's right. We use membranes. We use membranes to... I, I really can't stand the way my finger writes on this. Let's see if my pencil is... Is it charged enough for me to be able to... So, Membranes. Can't you take a piece of paper and like unwrap the whole thing and, and put it down and then eat it? That way we don't have to like listen to the crackling every five seconds. She's so nice. She's trying to be real quiet about it, but every time she she crinkles something, he's like crinkle, 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 and then it's chocolate. So there's like chocolate all over her fingers. It's all over her pencils. She's licking her pencil. It's just it's just a mess. It's cute to watch though. All right, so membranes, membranes on the inside of the plasma membrane. So, there, so what's key is that this, this eukaryote has many rooms. One of the rooms that make it very distinctive is this thing. And what do you think that is? That's right. That's called the nucleus. That's called the nucleus. It is made of a membrane creating compartments. Inside this compartment, inside the nucleus, you have DNA. In eukaryotes, it's linear. It's linear DNA that has two ends, just like we talked about. There's another room inside the nucleus, this whole other room here, that's called the nucleolus. Very similar. So it's two rooms. 
Now, I'm going to do one of these things if you don't mind. I hope you don't mind, but if you do, it's too bad. It's going to look something like this. Have you seen these things before? They do it in books a lot. Have you seen that in books or not? Yes. What, what am I doing? Why, why am I doing this? That's right. I love that. Zooming in is correct. Yeah. Brilliant children. That's right. Zooming in. And when we can zoom in, what we see, if I, if I zoomed in, and let's say I made the nucleus, uh, I'm going to make it purple. All right. Actually, maybe I shouldn't because I'll make it yellow. So I'm going to make the membrane yellow. This inner membrane yellow. The white one is the plasma membrane or cell membrane, right? Everybody get that, that that's a cell membrane? Yes, you'll have to identify what each is and what each does and, and the difference between it and the others, I'll show you, yes. If we look at this one, which is called the nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane, then what we'd see is, is this, this membrane, it'll be made of lipids. Is there someone knocking on our door? Who's knocking at our door? What's going on? We, is it not time to leave yet, is it? Oh, someone went to the restaurant. There are holes in the membrane. There are these holes. These holes are called nuclear pores. They allow things in and out of the membrane. You know what? If you don't mind, I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to draw it over here. And nuclear pores are, they allow, bless you, stuff in and out of the nucleus. Now, DNA can't leave, so DNA cannot leave the nucleus. Is that clear? DNA cannot leave, but RNA can. That's going to be very important. This is one of those things that foreshadows you've read books before I'm assuming and you you know these things this thing called foreshadowing where they tell you something and later in the story it comes back and that's the bad guy or that's the good guy or that's the thing that was a secret to everything well this is one of those foreshadowing things DNA can't leave the nucleus but RNA can and these pores let things in and out of the nucleus there's another organelle in this eukaryote that's called it looks like this. Let me see. Color code it. I'll make it blue. There's a lot of these, and again, they have a membrane. They're usually have, they're folded. There's two membranes. There's double membrane. So this one has a double membrane. And it's called a mitochondria. And mitochondria have double membranes. Mitochondria uh, process energy. They make ATP. We'll talk about what ATP is later. Uh, so you should know that's why they call it the powerhouse of the cell. You've heard of that before, I'm sure, in elementary school. They make uh, uh, process energy, double membranes, and they have their own DNA. That's really interesting. They have their own DNA. So mitochondria are really, really interesting little things. Uh, and they're very much like like prokaryotes. Are they prokaryotes? No. But are they like prokaryotes? Yes. And they're inside a eukaryote. Isn't that interesting? 
There are these things that are organelles, they have double membranes, their own DNA, and they act like prokaryotes in very many ways, like very similar to prokaryotes that live inside every eukaryotic organism. Yes, question. That's a good question. I suppose if they were floating around somewhere, somebody might consider them prokaryotes, but they're so distinctive. They can't exist outside the cell. So it's a good question. They're are, they are very similar to prokaryotes in many ways, these organelles. Now, that's one type of eukaryote. There's another. Let's draw another type of eukaryote. Let me see if I can do this. I don't know if it's going to... It's just... Oh. I'm going to hate doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Now, there's another type of prokaryote that's very similar. Everything's the same. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of a lot of this, though, so I can draw some of the other stuff. So a lot of this stuff is still there. Is that clear? I'm not getting rid of that. The cell membrane's still there. I'm actually going to go ahead and leave the lines. It is a eukaryote, though. It just has something else some other things that the other eukaryote doesn't have. Spikes, it's too thick. Oh, I'm sorry, I know I'm picky, but it just looks stupid. I'll just rewrite the whole thing. How's that jerk? It's still a eukaryote, but it has this, this really interesting set of features. And the first feature I'm going to go ahead and draw out is outside the cell matrix, it has this thing. Called, and it's not really to scale, so I apologize for that, but this thing called a cell wall. It's made of cellulose, so it's, it's actually made of sugar, right? It's a, it's a polymer of sugar. We learned that. It's made of cellulose. And inside the cell, this eukaryote has something else that's weird. It has... Let's see what color should I make this? These things called, there, I'm gonna go ahead and look, they look weird. They have stacks of membranes. They're me stacks of membranes. Again, double membrane. Let's, let's go ahead and draw that out here. They have double membranes. They have uh, their own DNA. They also process sugar and process energy. But they make, they make sugar. They do something called photosynthesis. And they're called chloroplasts. And they're green. That's what makes plants green. And then there's another organelle. It's really weird. It's just, that's not in the other eukaryote. It's really big. It's, a, it's actually the biggest organelle in the cell. It's, it takes up a good portion of the cell, of this type of cell. Yeah, it, this, these are not in this. So let me erase that. I'm going to leave the uh, chloroplast there because I already drew the line. So I'm going to erase these. These aren't inside. The chloroplast is not inside it. Is that clear? It's above it, if that makes any sense. Does that make sense? Yes? Are we clear on that? Yes. Yes? People in the back? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, no, no, no. They're still all inside the cell, but this is three-dimensional. So this is further back, right? So this organelle would be further back. This is um, a closer to you, and this one's further away from you. Does that make sense? All right. 
I hope it does. I hope you don't confuse it. This thing holds a lot of stuff, and we'll talk about what it holds later. But it really has a lot to do with water. And this thing's called the central vacuole. Central vacuole. So as a central vacuole has chloroplasts, has a cell wall, but it still has a nucleus and all the rest of the and all the rest of the organs. There's a lot of organelles I still have to cover, but this is what we have so far. The central vacuole has to do with water regulation. That's the main function. It regulates osmosis, osmoregulation. And that's not a Q, that's a G. So that's water regulation. Are we clear? That's what the central vacuum is doing. So these two things, let's go ahead and, and look at them. They're both eukaryotes. This one, they both have mitochondria, correct? They both have cell membranes. And honestly, someone said in the other class they should do a Venn diagram. I actually, she was joking, but then it turned out I, I kind of agree with her. I think she said it because she was sick of Venn diagrams, but. Mitochondria, uh, they both have nuclei, correct? They have, they both have nucleolus. Can't you guys just leave the door open when you go to the bathroom? They have, huh? Yeah, leave it open. Yeah. Is it me or is it cold in here? Uh, it's either cold or hot, man. I can't get it to stay in just normal. So uh, we know that th these are all the things they share, correct? They both have an extracellular ma matrix. Again, they both share other organelles. We're not, we're not there yet. But then there's some stuff that's different. And now the stuff that's different, that's all the stuff that's the same. The stuff that's different is what? This one has, oh, I should tell you, these cells, these types of cells over here, they can have a flagella or they can have cilia. Cilia or flagella. Someone check the spelling of flagella. See if there's two L's in it. I always, one of those things I always mess up. So flagella and cilia, they're for moving. They for moving. Flagella you've seen on a sperm, right? They, they kind of have tails. They look like this as well. All right, good. And cilia, they're like little oars. In fact, I think Noel Lennox found uh, ciliate the other day. It was zooming around in the pond water. They zoom around. They eat bacteria. Uh, but you have cilia, too. You have cilia in your throat. Uh, that's, what gets, that's what feels like it's tickling. It's in your... It's, uh, in your uh, uh, trachea and in your bronchioles, 
in your nut, in your pass in your airways, you have these little cilia that help get the mucus out. When you cough up that mucus, that's the cilia moving all that mucus up with trapped dirt and bacteria out of there. So cilia and and uh, I should add that. So one of the things that's different is that so these are the same. is that these guys have cilia and or flagella. All right. But this other kind has cell wall. This has chloroplasts. This has central vacuole. So what what is this kind of what is this kind of thing here, versus this kind of eukaryote? This eukaryote versus this eukaryote. Anybody know? No guesses. This would be known as a plant cell, and this one over here would be known as an animal cell. So one list of eukaryote, one type, bless you, one type of eukaryote is an animal cell, another type of eukaryote. Both plants and animals have nuclei. They have these compartments inside the big compartment called the cell. So let's go ahead and, and talk about all the different kinds of eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Let's organize these into, into groups. So, because we're looking at a lot of cells and Thursday you'll be dealing with a lot more cells. You'll actually have a formal lab write-up you're gonna have to do on what you've discovered. So prokaryote, can be either a bacteria or it could be an archaebacteria. Slightly different, but what's interesting about these guys is they have no internal they have no internal membranes. They only have the plasma membrane and they have a round, they have round DNA, which is interesting to me. Their DNA is circular. They have smaller plasma DNAs. Ribosomes, they have ribosomes, but ribosomes don't have, don't have membranes. So no internal membranes. So what does that mean? No compartments no specialized compartments now in eukaryotes we already talked about that you have the nucleus the nucleolus you have um, the chloroplast and the mitochondria and there's others we'll talk about a lot more but here there are no compartments no membranes everything that happens happens in this one space it's still a cell because it does have a cell membrane And interestingly, it has a different kind of cell wall. It does have a cell wall, but it's different. All right, whatever. It does have a cell wall. It's just different from a eukaryotic uh, cell wall. I shouldn't draw it that way. It's made of something different. A plant cell wall is made of cellulose. This is not made of cellulose. But it does have a cell wall.
has a cell wall, has a plasma membrane, has a nucleoid region. We call this region a nucleoid region. So there is DNA. It does have DNA. All living things have DNA. It has a plasma membrane. It is a cell, but they don't have all the fancy stuff that eukaryotes have. Are we clear? So the prokaryotes are very simple. And I believe your book calls the difference between this and a, and a shack. A house and a shack, right? Or it's not the book, maybe it was the MIT lecture, but in any case. So if you think of a prokaryote, you can think of a, a prokaryote like a tent or a shack, right? One room shack. You got your bathroom, your kitchen, your bedroom, all in one space. There's no, your toilet's right next to the bed, it's right next to the stove, right? That's how people used to live, you realize that? Okay, usually they put a toilet outside, but when they had indoor plumbing, the toilet would be right there, there's no room, no walls, nothing. It's just all in one space, as if we all lived in here. We had a kitchen there and a bathroom there, but there's no rooms, there's no separation. So that, but in a eukaryote, it's more like a modern house where you have rooms for everything, okay? Eukaryotes tend to have rooms for everything. And there's more than one type of eukaryote, just like there's more than one type of prokaryote. Eukaryotes, we know about animal, but we have animals, we, animals have a really, really close cousin which a lot of people don't think are close cousins. In fact, we used to think they were plants, but they're very close to us in how they do things. We call them fungi. So mushrooms are very close to humans. It's interesting. Their DNA, they have similar genes, they do similar things. They don't do photosynthesis. Uh, obviously, they eat dead things, right? That's what mushrooms do, they, they're necrophores. They break down material, organic material. So they are obviously very different. But if you compare fungi, f the mushroom to us, and then you compare plants to us, mushrooms are much closer. And then, of course, you have plants. And you have these things called proteas. Now, that thing that you saw f uh, swimming around in the pond water on Friday, that was a proteast. Proteins are interesting. They're kind of in between. In between a lot of these different groups, right? They're kind of, they can be a lot of different things. That You can have an amoeba that has, changes shape. It could look something like that. You can have a ciliate that looks like this. All right. You can have... Uh, you can have all kinds of different things. The, the key is that they all have what? They all have a nucleus. They all have organelles. They have all the other things that you'd expect to see in a eukaryote, but they're single cell. Proteins tend to be single cell. Some are multicellular because they're so different. It's a big group, mostly. Thank you. Plants obviously are different from animals. Uh, I don't know why you put anything away. I'm not done yet. Let me finish my sentence. Rude. You should be writing it down. So, proteins are tend to be single cell. Plants obviously are a big group, and they do all kinds of things: trees, grasses, etc. Fungi, as you know, are like mushrooms, but they're also molds. You know, this, the, the stuff that slime that grows in your bathroom is also a fungi. It just doesn't, it doesn't have a, a fruiting body. It doesn't, produce, it doesn't produce a mushroom. That's all. And, of course, animals come in all different sizes, including centipedes, by the way. Where's the what? What's slimy stuff? Uh, if you've ever seen mold grow in a bathroom, you know, it's like a pink or it's, it could be, uh, 
all different kind. Yep, yeah, that that you never see, you've never seen like a, a a slimy coating in the bathroom at all. Any bathroom you've never been. Okay, well, there can be slimy stuff in a bathroom. It's called mold. It's common. Okay, well, bathroom is a perfect place for mold because it grows. There's very. It's very wet and often dark. So mold mushrooms need wet and dark. Well, whatever. The point is, mold grows in bathrooms and in basements and underground. All right, take it easy. What are plants? They're green. There are eukaryotes. What? Uh, chloroplasts are some of the characteristics that make plants. Most plants have some type of leaf, but they have they again come in all kinds of varieties. There are leaf, leaves that come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. There are leaves that come off stems like this. There are leaves that have that are more like needles. Like pine needles. Do you know pine needles are leaves? Did you know that? Yeah. So they're actually leaves. They're, they're leaves that are evolved to deal with the cold. Uh, there are plants. Uh, most plants do photosynthesis. But there are plants that are parasites. They don't really do photosynthesis per se. They actually steal the sugar from other plants. Uh, there's some ivies and things that, that, that have, there are obviously some that do a little boat. Uh, there are plants, there are water, underwater plants or water plants. There are desert plants. What's the plant that, uh, takes sugar from other plants? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a parasite. I'll have to look up what it is, but there's more than one. Uh, there are plants that produce fruit. There are plants that produce nuts. There are plants that 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 produce poisons. There are flowering plants. There are plants that don't flower. There are moss. Is uh, there are plants that uh, there's a lot of different kinds of plants. So there's a lot of variety here. They're all eukaryotes, though. All of them have a nuclei, and they all have chloroplasts inside them, or at least, say what now? No, it's all right. What were you saying? What about the ones that move and bite? They don't move. The flytraps. The Venus flytrap, they just, they, they can't get up and move. I should be clear about that. They do move. There are plants that move, but they just don't get up and move anywhere. So the way they, they, they tend to move is they tend to swell some cells open. So if you have, think about it like in Minecraft, if you have a bunch of cells that are laid up, remember they all have, they all have uh, cell walls so they can keep a really rigid shape. And what happens if you have these cells like this that make up a stem and then these guys over here, these swell up. What happens when these swell up and they get bigger? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn the stem. The stem will turn this way, you see? Mm -hmm. And that's how some flowers, that's how some flowers, uh, that's how they, uh, they follow the sun. Some flowers tend to follow the sun as they, uh, as they, as the sun moves across the sky. And the way, the way they, some flowers do that is they swell up certain parts of their, of their, uh, of their stem, and so they turn and they they follow the sun across the sky. Uh, Venus flytraps also can close and trap bugs. They do that to get nitrogen because there's they live in poor night. They don't eat the bug for energy. They don't need it for energy. They do photosynthesis. But they need the bug to get nitrogen because they have to make amino acids. Plants make amino acids because they are living creatures. They use the, the same biomolecules we use. In fact, that's why we eat them. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, next. Um, 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 I'm sorry to move backwards, but what's the 
what you wrote under pro, proptis. What's that? Single celled mostly. They're mostly single celled. There are, there are plenty of, I say mostly, I can't really give you a number. Uh, I would say that there's a lot that are multicellular and there's a lot that aren't. What's the, the drone? This is a ciliate. It's an organism, a type of organism that has cilia. Remember we said that one of the things that, that animals can do, and these are not animals, by the way. These, again, are not animals. But one of the things that protists and, and animals can do is move. So they have these things called cilia. There are some that have flagella. And the flagella allow them to move. This, so that's a, those are types of movement. This is an amoeba. So they do have flagella. Like Osmosis Jones, if you watch that cartoon, is an amoeba. Or it's an amoeboid cell. It's actually supposed to be a white, uh, white blood cell. But in any case, they have, it changes its cytoskeleton. It, and it can move and squeeze through spaces. And it can actually solve puzzles. It's a really interesting organism. Uh, so ciliates and amoebas and uh, flag uh, organisms with flagella can all move very quickly through water. Uh, just write it any which way and spell it at home. A-M-O-E-B-A. -E but I'm moving on. We're running out of time. So fungi, the fungus that you're kind of used to seeing in, in storybooks looks something like this, right? It has like uh, some mushrooms. Sometimes they'll put little, it's red, and they'll put white spots on it. Uh, so mushrooms are fungi, but so are, and by the way, mushrooms are just the fruiting body. Most of the fungus is underground. There are mushrooms that take up whole forest, that, that one organism is underneath the entire forest. And then you, all you see is this mushroom in the field. When you see a mushroom, most of the organism is underground. There are... Yeah, these are, where the, these are full of their babies. And their babies are in little things called spores. Focusing, focusing, spores, spores get the, when the, when the fruiting body gets ready to explode, it, ex, it's, it shoots out its spores into the air. You breathe in these baby mushroom all the time. S P O R E S. S P O R E S. This is a mushroom, yeah. Or it's a bad drawing of one. Wait, can you, can you spell that? That bad. No, I can't. So we have to get moving. So spores. Again, anything that you miss, just look it up on the video. I'm, I'm, I, I can't say it any other way. All right, then the, another form of fungi is mildew. That's fungi? Yeah, that's a fungus. Uh, athlete's foot. It's a fun, it's a disease, it's a disease caused athlete's foot. The fungus gets underneath the bed of the nails and in between the toes and starts to an infection. But it's, I don't know about that. Let's just move on. Yeah, there's a lot of things I hear. I don't know how much of it's true. Let's just move. Let's just be clear. Uh, let's stay with the facts in this class, if that's okay. Mildew, athlete's foot. Uh, these are examples of fungi. Yeast. From yeast infections to making bread and alcohol. So we're fungi? You are eating fungi. Or the dead, the cooked uh, remnants of the yeast is what you're eating. 
bread bread is is wheat flour that's mixed with other ingredients and then you mix yeast in and the yeast eat that that bread that wheat and they produce a gas called carbon dioxide which makes little air pockets in the bread that's what the rising is and then when you bake it you kill the yeast but you also cook the bread and then you eat bread that's what bread is now animals Animals, obviously, you know what they are. They are anywhere from human to things like insects to things like, you know, um, other mammals, birds, fish. Like, it, the list goes on, right? So there's a lot of animals that I'm sure you're aware of. The fungi can be multicellular. As you see, the mushroom is obviously multicellular. Uh, or it can be single-celled, like a yeast. A yeast is single-celled. Proteins can be single-celled or multicellular, depending on their phase of life. They could start single-celled and end up having a phase of their life where they're multicellular. Plants are multicellular. Animals are multicellular. So, yeah, the protist and fungi do, not humans, right? Humans do, we do start off as a single cell. When your mom and your dad got together and made you, you were one single cell. And then you started to do a process called cell division, do the cell cycle, and do something called mitosis, and you became you. You made it a trillion cells. You went from one to a trillion cells. So, yes, you can go from one to multicellular. So, depending on the life cycle. So, life is very complicated, and cells can be very complicated. And I would, I, if I were you, I would watch and take notes on the video I posted yesterday that's not the class video that I posted that was for fun. I'm going to sign it eventually. So, if you have time, I would watch that. It's a very interesting video. I think you'll have fun with it. So let's redraw what we, what we drew yesterday and add to it. We drew a cell. We drew a nucleus. There's a nucleolus. We said there was this, this little area on the outside. I, I'll say this again for those of you that, that were confused today. There's an area on the outside of the cell that is called... The extracellular matrix, it's this region out here. It's made of all kinds of proteins. And yes, you could have drawn a bunch of, of crisscrossing proteins starting in the membrane. They're with all kinds of different functions. That is a matrix, that is correct. But this is the extracellular matrix, right? This is outside the body. This extracellular is connected to the intracellular matrix that's called the cytoskeleton. So there's a cytoskeleton that connects, that goes actually from the centrioles, that radiates out and branches and forms. I don't know what's going on over there, but... Uh, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, both. You were you were one single cell, and you turned into a multicellular. So yes, and can you go from multicellular to single cell? Your father is a multicellular organism. He produced a single cell that became you. Well, a single cell that combined with another single cell that your mother made to become you. If you die, if you die in your body um, and decompose, can you be a single cell? No. Once you be once you're dead, you're dead. It's only fantasy that has you coming back as zombies and such. How long after? How long afterwards? 
Not long. They die pretty quickly. All right, so let's be clear about this. These, these, this is what I hope none of you put as the answer to today's answer of extracellular matrix. This is the cytoskeleton. Everybody should know what that is. It's the cells don't are not just bags of. Yeah, I labeled it, didn't I? I, I can't tell sure. if you can tell colors. I was just making sure. Okay, I don't know if you can tell colors. Can you tell the colors on the screen? Yeah, but I was just clarifying. I'm just saying, can you tell that this is white and this is gray? Yeah. Okay. So this gray is the cytoskeleton. It is inside the cell. Skeletons are inside the cell. And the blue is your nucleus. And then you have your nucleolus. And of course, we drew yesterday the mitochondrias. You can make it a different color if you'd like. Let's make it red. But there's other membrane, there are other membranes in this cell, and one of the other membranes that we have in the cell, and this is a very complex structure. It's not as simple as you might think. There are these membranes that go back and forth. And because it's because this gets so complicated, I'm gonna erase this whole section of cytoskeleton. You have to understand it, the cytoskeleton is still there. Don't think it's gone. But this is a three-dimensional structure, and I only have two dimensions to work with, so I have to continuously erase and draw different structures. I'm confused. Yeah. The, okay, the gray. The cy the, the cytoskeleton, yeah. It's the gray. Do you see this? Do you see this? These lines? Do you see these lines? Yeah. This, this is the cytoskeleton. But it's white. I asked you if you could tell that this was gray. You said yeah. Because I didn't know you were about to write the, the skeletons. Huh? Before you wrote All right. I'm not, I, I don't want to argue with you. you no, can no, you I tell don't. that this is gray? Yes or no? No. All right. Can you tell that that's not white? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the cytoskeleton. Uh, Carly, if you, I, no offense, if you got a giggle, go in another room, go in the hallway. So you got this gray. That's your cytoskeleton. It, it, hold, it gives itself form. It acts as roads inside the cell for your things to get moved around. So that's the cytoskeleton in the cell. You said, what's the function of the cytoskeleton? I, I have to get going, but it gives itself form. So one other, one really big and important organelle is a membrane. It's actually, it, it looks like I'm drawing this tube, but it's actually more of a, it's more of a, a bunch of sheets, sheets of membranes, if that makes any sense. If, I don't know if that word makes sense to you, but sheets of membrane that sit in the cell. I'll tell you the name of it in a second. 
but this is called the endoplasmic reticulum. And it has two parts. It has a rough and a smooth. The rough has these little ribosomes on it. And the smooth obviously does not. So there's a, the short word for this is RER for the, that's rough endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes. It's another organelle we'll talk about in just in next, actually. And then it, there's a smooth ER, which has two, di they have two different functions. The rough ER has a different function from the RER, or the RER has a different function from the SER. The rough ER has ribosomes. Another organelle that's called ribosomes. Ribosomes are enzymes made mostly of RNA that make proteins. Is that clear? So these are all along, this is studded, studded with ribosomes that make proteins. This is a, this is a membrane that's continuous with the nuclear membrane. So they're, they're connected. These are all connected to each other. From here all the way to here, they're all one giant membrane. And the endoplasmic reticulum uh, has a lot of different functions. But obviously the RER, its main job is to prepare proteins, make proteins and modify them. So the RER makes proteins... and prepares them. The smoothie are among many other functions uh, creates lipids. I should not, let's not even say lipids. Creates vesicles to transport proteins. So in order to get a protein from one place to another in the cell, you create these lipid bilayer spheres. They're made of Obviously lipids. I hope it's obvious they're made of lipids. They're spheres. I can only draw circles. And in them, you will have proteins. Some of the proteins might be embedded in the membrane. They might be integral membrane proteins. Some of the proteins might be inside the vesicle. Some of the proteins might be actually on the inside. So these vesicles move, are moved all around the cell to transport the proteins where they need to go. That's how you get proteins from here to the membrane. Now there's a lot of details that I'm leaving out. You'll learn them if you take AP Biology, but that's the basic idea. These, the RER, 
is the place where a lot of the proteins are made. The SER packages them, helps them get ready to get sent to the next step in this process called the Golgi body. Golgi body. Body. B-O-D-Y. So there's a second... Hey, hey, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, hello, excuse me, hello, so you have this Golgi body, yeah, yeah, shh, it's a Golgi body and it's spelled this way, make sure you capitalize it. That's where these vesicles go. So they go from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi body. That's the next step in their travels. All right. Have a good day. The cytoskeleton, and, and you just, we walked through the video just a minute ago, and I'll post the video on Schoology as well to make sure you have it if you want to reference it. The cytoskeleton has at its center a centrosome. Is at the center. That center is next to next to the nucleus. We'll talk more about this when we talk about mitosis and meiosis. But it's a centrosome and it's it's the center it's the center of the cytoskeleton. Centrosome is the center of the cytoskeleton. Also, also, it has two. It has two. What? What were they? Centrosome and what were the other one? Oh, centrioles. Right. So they have two centrioles. And they have a right and a left, right slash left. All right, so that's the cytoskeleton. All those are made, and the cytoskeleton is made of micro, that's the symbol for micro, tubules. I'm not sure I got the spelling right, but that's close enough. Now, that being said, we know that the, we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, that's where ribosomes on the rough, ribosomes make proteins. If the protein has a lot, up arrow means a lot, of hydrophobic R groups then it goes into the RER. And we should know that, and you, as you saw from the pictures, the RER is like this, these, these bunch of membranes that, that fold upon each other. There in the RER, they get things added to them. You add lipids and slash carbohydrates to mostly carbohydrates, but whatever you add, you change the protein, and then it goes into the smooth ER. And there's further changes. Further changes. And then the, as the smooth ER gets changes happening to it, what happens is that you start at the end of it, at the end you have a bunch of
well, you have two kinds. You have the you have the glycolipids. The, the smoothie R. I want to make sure you understand uh, is focuses on lipids. It does all kinds of fancy chemistry, but it's mainly about lipids. The smoothie R, glycolipids and glycoproteins. They're going to be in a vesicle. This is another one of those vocab words, right? Vesicle, ribosomes, RER, SER. Uh, what's another one? Glycolipids, glycoproteins, centrioles, microtubules, centrosome, cytoskeleton. These are all words you should know, right? I could easily put on, on a quiz tomorrow. So when you're dealing with glycolipids, I put in vesicles, they're in vesicles. They're either in one of two places. They're either inside the vesicle, so they're they're getting secreted. Secreted. That means they're leaving the cell. Proteins that are leaving the cell. Or they are proteins that are in the membrane. So the, so what you see is that you get you get this you get this protein that's stuck in the membrane of the vesicle these are going to be integral membrane proteins when they get to the outer membrane to the cell membrane they're going to be recept. What are they going to be? They're going to be receptors. They're going to be channels, right? They're going to be what else? They're going to be binding proteins. They're going to be ident ID proteins, right? Cell cell recognition, communications, that kind of thing. What kinds of proteins are secreted? Well, those kinds of proteins, can you guess what's going to be put out of the, of the, of the cell? Can you make a guess? Any guess? I gave you one already in our discussion. You got mucus. Oh, so you put out mucus, snot, right? You got hormones. Hormones are Teeth, sweat. Sweat. Teeth, blood. Uh, uh, sweat, uh, tears. Blood is not secreted from cells blood is made of cells and water and sugar and oxygen so blood is a solution uh, urine urea yes urea is the salt that your 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 cells release urea your bot your kidneys concentrate it into urine saliva and there's other there's stuff in saliva but yeah there's a lot of stuff in saliva but all yeah saliva what is it? Fingernails. Yeah. They have this stuff. Keratin. It's called keratin. What about earwax? Earwax. Absolutely. Actually, earwax is a little harder, but let's go ahead and say earwax. But earwax is actually a bunch of, it's a combination of different things, but certainly it's some of it's being put out by cells. Oh, eye boogers? I don't know what they call them. Yeah, well, tears. The, I, the eye boogers are just the accumulation of dirt from overnight, and the tears get all dried up. But you can see that all this stuff gets put out by your cells. 
uh, signaling proteins, other signaling proteins. Uh, have you heard of neurotransmitters? All right, 